If you're running a business or a side hustle whilst you're still employed by someone else in a 9 to 5 job, you have to be very careful that you don't fall into any trouble. In this video, we're going to look at some of the pitfalls that you might fall into, and I'm going to share some experiences that I had earlier in my career. You have to be very aware of the dangers when running a side hustle while still employed. For a start, you need to check your employment contracts, because some companies might have some small print in there which stipulate that anything you build, create or invent whilst employed by that company actually belongs to them. So I've worked at one company where this was actually explicitly stated in the contract and you know, at the time I wasn't actually trying to create anything but I know some people that were and in the end they felt they had to leave the company so this is something you need to be very aware of. If they don't have any conditions like this in the contract then I really do advise that you actually talk to the company and see if they have any issues with it. Most of the companies I've worked at haven't really had an issue around me creating something but there have been a few instances where I've fallen into trouble well, nearly falling into trouble, so I'll talk about those in a moment. Something else you need to be very careful of is um, kind of what equipment you use. So I do not recommend using any company laptops or computers. Don't use any company software licenses, so make sure everything is owned by yourself. And obviously this one goes without saying, that don't work on your business whilst you're actually at work. I mean, that's just, well, it's, for a start, it's quite rude, but don't just don't do that anyway, because then they can potentially lay claim to anything that you've done. And that kind of goes for any resources that the company might have. So even using their electricity bill could, or, or even using their electricity could put you into trouble because you're using company resources. So if you are going to build something, use your own machine, your own software, do it at home, in the evenings, or outside of work, using everything that you own yourself personally. So there's a few instances where I've had to check with a company um, when I've been creating something. So when I first started creating sound libraries, this was back when I was working for an online bank, one of the first online banks in the UK. Because they were a regulated industry in financial services, there's actually a rule saying you can't be, or you can't have a controlling interest in any other company. Now when I first started creating sound libraries, this really wasn't a problem because I was just effectively a sole trader doing a little bit of work on the side. So they were perfectly fine with that. My boss knew what I was doing. But when it got to the point where my accountant was actually recommending that I form a limited company, this is where I had to be careful. So there was a HR rule which kind of leads back to regulation rule which says you can't be a controlling member of a company that could potentially be um, a conflict of interest. So I spoke to HR and I spoke to the business legal team and I explained what I was doing. So I was creating sound libraries and sound sample libraries and I had to submit a whole load of official documentation and talking about what I was going to be doing, kind of the level of money I expected to be making, and pretty much just quite a lot of details about it. And then I had to wait quite a while, it was nearly four weeks, for them to come back with a decision. Now in the end, they turned around and said, yes, we can see what you're doing is not an issue, so we have no problem with you creating a limited company. But then what I would have to do is every year, I would have to go back and then just check in with them just to make sure that what I'm doing still falls within the parameters of what they agreed. So in that instance, because it's a regulated industry and there's lots of rules about what you can and can't do, especially when you're in a position of power, which I was, because I was a lead developer while I was there, you just have to be sort of careful. And this could be for any other regulated industry. So if you work in government or local government, pharmaceutical, financial services, insurance, you just need to make sure that if you do create a company that you are doing it within the rules that are allowed in your country and within the legal framework that you work within. The other time which I kind of had a few problems um, is when I was working for a large pharmaceutical company. Now this was just after I'd started creating courses for Pluralsight. So at the time I probably had two courses out. Now the company itself as a whole didn't have any problems with this whatsoever. In fact I even discussed it in my job interview when I went there. But a the problem I had was my immediate boss that I started working for. She was a very traditional woman or very traditional boss or kind of you know, traditional manager, old school manager as it were. And she really did not like the fact that I was working on stuff on my own time. Now, I used my own laptop, my own equipment, it's all done at home. Didn't cross paths with work at all. Um, but her very traditional attitude was, if you have time to work on things in the evening, then clearly you're not working me hard enough. Which most people these days will just think is absolutely ridiculous. Um, but she really did have a problem with me doing this. Now, luckily, it got to a point where I was in a position to leave. Um, I was going to leave and go work full time, 
doing what I was doing. But in the end, I just went and worked for another startup because I had an opportunity to come up at a startup, which looked quite interesting. So I did that in the end. So that one didn't really end up being a problem, but it was quite awkward for a long time. And it was quite unpleasant, to be honest. So the key message here is, you know, if you are creating a side hustle, and that is kind of one of the lower risk ways of creating a business, it's one of the ways I actually encourage you to, to try this out, is just be careful. Check with your employment contract. Just make sure there's no rules in there which mean that anything you create inadvertently belongs to the company, because that could be an issue. Um, if you're okay on that standpoint, make sure you use all of your own equipment, laptops, computers, software licenses, electricity, and time, because don't forget, whilst they're paying you while you're there, they effectively are paying for that time. So you can't work on your own stuff whilst they're technically paying for you. That's just unethical, it's wrong. And so make sure you do all of that, but also I advise um, potentially talking to your manager and just explaining what it is that you're doing. Now obviously, if you're creating something that's a competitor to your day job, and it's going to cause a conflict of interest, then that's always going to be an issue, no matter what country you live in. But if you're just doing something on the side that's a bit of fun that you want to turn into a business, generally I'd advise you talk to your manager and just let the company know what you're doing, just so that there's no nasty surprises further down the line. So if you enjoyed that video, if you could please like, leave a comment as well, and um, if you've had any issues around companies um, when you've created a business, or if you're currently thinking of creating a business, you want to ask some questions just leave some comments down below and if you can subscribe as well and hit the bell notification then you'll be notified when i release a new video thanks a lot